In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to give you some tips on using time information that's embedded in your photographs and projected on the screen as you're building your project. This is helpful sometimes when you want to historically give information about when that photograph was taken, and you can even add where by adding a remark. Let me show you what we're talking about. We have three photographs on my timeline. If I highlight the first one and right click, I'm going to click on the Properties option. And this will show you under the File category that we have two pieces of information that were bedded in, into this photograph. One was the date of the photograph and the other was the time. You see it here on the screen. PowerDirector can take that information and put it on the screen without you typing it in yourself. So with that clip highlighted, I'm going to click on the Time Info button above the timeline. That gives me my Use Time Information screen. Unfortunately, it comes in small and I can't expand the size of it. But there are three pieces of information we can put on the screen. We can add the date stamp, which it reads, and we can change the format here to any format we like. Let's use a regular date here. And I'm going to add the date stamp. I can add a timestamp. I'll click on that. And again, we have options in the drop down. We can use the hours and minutes and seconds, or we can do AM and PM if we want to as well. We'll leave it at PM. Then I can add a remark. So I'm just going to click here, type in fall scene, and we have all three. Now, if I click on OK, Let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the image and we're going to play and you're going to see it's going to fade onto the screen with the date followed by the time followed by my remark and then it's going to fade out. That's the default behavior but let's look at how we can change all of those. I'm going to highlight it again and click on time info. Now, if I want that information in a different part of the screen, I have some options. I go to the Overlay Format tab. And this is where I can place it. Upper left corner, I can do lower left. I can do upper right. I can do lower right. So I can put it in any of the corners, but that's not all. I can also take and drag it and put it anywhere else I want on the clip. And so that gives me the option. Now, you notice it faded in and faded out. I have no control over that, but I can click on the box here. And when I check this box, it says show text and whole clip. So now it will stay on the screen for the duration at which my clip is on the screen. So let's click OK and look at the difference here. Again, it blanks it out. And when we play it, now it's going to appear in a different location and it will appear uh, where I placed it on the screen. Let's look at something else about options we have when we're working with this particular tool. One of the things I've noticed is there's a glitch in here, a bug. If I go date stamp and remark and uncheck timestamp, watch what happens. We're going to start and play it and in this case it does it do a carriage return between my date and my remark. So that's something to be aware of. I actually have to put a space before the word fall and I would get them both on the same line. Now what happens when I want to show it differently? Let's change the overlay format from date, time, and comment to uh, time, date, and comment. And put the comment on the end but switch the other two. Click on OK. Again it blanks it out. And now for some reason it does it right. I've got the date and then I've got the comment on different lines. I can also reverse it another way. If I click here, I can change the format of the output on my overlay format tab. I can change it to comment date and time. Click on OK. And then when we play this, we're going to see the comments on the top and the date is below it. And if I had a time checked, it would be below that. So we only have that bug in that one series if you choose those two elements. Let's look at something else we can do when we're going to modify this information. Let's assume I want, uh, let's just go back to the regular date stamp and not have a remark at all. 
and let's move it to the upper right. I'm going to go to Overlay Format. Here, beyond changing these two, we have another button. We can change the text setting. I'm going to click on that. And now you can change the font to fit any font that's loaded in your Windows system. I'll go to this chunk 5. Let's change the text color as well. I'm going to click here and let's go and pick an orange. Click OK. And now I have orange color. Let's give it a shadow. And I can change the color of the shadow as well. I can even change it from the screen. Let's go with this, this color here. Click on OK. And now I have a different text and a shadow. I can change the font size. And let's change it to bold italic. Click on OK. Now in this case I'm going to have to move it over because of the font size. Let's click on OK and see what it looks like when we go back to play during the time this is on the screen. There's our new option. And you notice we have a bit of a shadow. We have different font and we've changed everything the way we wanted to. The other option that we have is if we have a whole group of photographs and we want to make the have each photograph take that same information and pull it out, we can have it do all of them at once. And all I have to do is click on apply to all. And it reminds me that we need this data in our image. I'll click on OK. And now let's click on the next option here. And here we have it applied in this particular one as well. But if I want to customize this one, I can change it. I can add the word false scene to this one. Click on OK. And then when we play our second photograph, I have the date and I have the remark. On the first one, all I have is the date. So you can apply them universally to everything on the track if you want to, and then customize each one according to your preference. That's a way in which you can take that information and apply it on the screen without creating another track, without adding any other text or titles in CyberLink PowerDirector.